knee dislocation, to amputate or not, that's the topic. Today we're talking about the Zach Miller and Alex Ruiz stories. The same injury, but two very different outcomes. Who are these men? What happened to them? Why did they have such different outcomes? And what happens for them now? Stay tuned to learn more. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedics and sports medicine that's easy to understand for everybody. And I do mean everybody. Okay. If you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Stable Knees. I'm also on TikTok at Dr. Dr. Chris Rayner. If you're looking for workouts, exercises, or information on injury prevention, be sure to follow us on our sister channel on YouTube, Human 2.0. And of course, I want everybody to learn about orthopedics and sports medicine. So help me accomplish this goal by sharing this content with anybody who you think might be interested in the topic. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video for my favorite comments from the last video and for the Sparks Notes summary. That being said, hit the notification bell and let's get on with the topic of the day. So who are Zach Miller and Alex Ruiz? Zach Miller is a former NFL football tight end. He last played football for the Chicago Bears in 2017, but he was a member of their team between 2014 and 2019. Prior to the Chicago Bears, he was first drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2009, where he remained until 2012. In 2013, he was signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but he was released in the offseason after having suffered a concussion. He was picked up by the Bears in December of 2013. After a Liz Frank injury to his left foot in 2014, he had a breakout season with the Bears in 2015. For more information on Liz Frank injuries, be sure to check out my video on Cam Newton's Liz Frank. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Zach suffered a foot fracture in week 11 of the 2016 season and was out for the remainder of that season. He returned to his scoring ways in 2017 for the first half of the season before he suffered another injury. This time, one that was major and on a level different than what he had ever experienced before. Alex Ruiz is a former starting high school quarterback at Linfield Christian High School in Temecula, California. He played at Linfield Christian High School for four years between 2015 and 2019. During his four years at Linfield Christian High School, he played in 23 games, completed 159 of 280 passes, threw for 1,942 yards with a completion percentage of 56.8%. Over his four-year career, he had a QB rating of 91.1. Over the last two years of his career, he only played in seven games, including six in his junior year before he was injured. It was not until his senior year that he returned to play in one final game. So now that you know who they are, what's the deal with these two players anyway? Both of these players suffered injuries that would change the course of their athletic paths. Both of these athletes had the misfortune of suffering a knee dislocation, a terrible injury that can occur by both contact and non-contact mechanisms, and that results in injury to the stabilizing structures around the knee. The knee is a hinge joint whose primary function is flexion and extension at the level of the knee. There is also a small amount of rotation and translation that is also possible at this joint. Stability of the knee is determined by both static and dynamic factors. Dynamic factors include all of the muscles around the knee, including the quadriceps, hamstrings, and the calf muscles, or the gastrosoleus complex. Static factors include both the shape of the bones and the stabilizing connective tissue, or ligaments that are in and around the knee. The femoral condyles are largely convexly shaped, while the tibial plateaus are predominantly cup-shaped to receive the condyles. Of particular importance to the static stability are the main stabilizing ligaments of the knee. That include the medial collateral ligament on the inside part of the knee, the lateral collateral ligament on the outside part of the knee, and the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments that cross one another in the central part of the knee. These structures, both static and dynamic, all work together to provide stability of the knee both at rest and during movement. Disruption of any one of these structures will result in some degree of instability of the knee the degree of which is commensurate with the amount of damage to the stabilizing structures. And basically, this is just a complex way of saying the more stuff that you damage, the looser that your knee is going to become. 
A mean dislocation is a term that is used to describe a situation where two or more of the main stabilizers of the knee have been damaged, allowing a situation where the integrity of the relationship between the femur and the tibia has been compromised. And this just means that you've injured enough structures in or around the knee that the femur and the tibia no longer are sitting over top one another. Both Zach Miller and Alex Ruiz suffered a knee dislocation while playing football. Zach's injury occurred on October 29 of 2017 during the week eight game pitting the Chicago Bears against the New Orleans Saints. After attempting to catch a touchdown pass, Miller landed on his left leg in an awkward manner, causing him to hyperextend his left knee significantly. Examination of his injured knee off the field indicated that he had not only dislocated his left knee, but that he had also likely injured his popliteal artery, one of the main arteries feeding the lower extremity. Fortunately, the vascular injury was suspected by his athletic therapist at the field. And at his therapist's urging, Miller was taken to a level one trauma center nearby where he was able to undergo successful vascular surgery the same day. A vein graft was taken from his right leg and it was used to repair the popliteal artery injury in his left leg. This simply means that the surgical team was able to repair the damaged artery using a piece of a blood vessel from the other leg so that blood could be supplied to the lower extremity like normal. Zach remained in hospital for approximately three weeks following his injury, during which time he underwent an additional seven or eight surgeries. Additional surgery was necessary to repair the various ligament injuries and to close the fasciotomies that had been required to control swelling caused by the initial injury. An external fixator, a frame used to stabilize the leg while the vascular graft and ligament grafts were healing, was removed after six weeks. Eventually, Zach was cleared to begin the rehabilitation process. Alex Ruiz's injury also occurred in October 2017. During a regular Friday night game on October 6 of 2017, Alex was tackled at the line of scrimmage by two defenders. His cleats became stuck on the turf while he was falling to the ground. He hyperextended his right knee while falling forward over his planted foot. Ultimately, he suffered a knee dislocation, just like Zach Miller. Also, like Zach Miller, he suffered an injury to his popliteal artery. However, in Alex's case, the arterial injury was not immediately recognized. After his injury, Alex was taken to a community hospital where his knee was assessed and a reduction was performed. And this just means that they gave him some sedation and they put his knee back into position. It was not until physicians noted that the color of Alex's foot had not recovered after the reduction of his knee that physicians realized that the popliteal artery had also been injured. Alex was transferred to a hospital with vascular surgery service where he underwent a multi-hour surgery to perform a vascular repair of his popliteal artery and to temporarily stabilize his right knee with an external fixator. Normal vascular function of his lower extremity was restored successfully at the completion of the surgery. However, restoration occurred only after an extended duration of time, time over which other problems occurred. There are a number of different mechanisms that can cause a knee dislocation. All knee dislocations are not created equally. Consequently, the various types of dislocations can be classified by a number of different ways that include energy level, direction of displacement of the shin or the tibia, and the structures that are involved. Using the Kennedy classification that describes the direction in which the tibia or the shin bone moves, the different types of knee dislocation include anterior, posterior, medial, lateral, and rotational. The most common type of dislocation is an anterior dislocation, such as that suffered by Miller and Ruiz, which occurs between 30 and 50% of the time. This type of knee dislocation is typically the result of a hyperextension mechanism, such as that suffered by both Miller and Ruiz. It usually involves, at the very least, the PCL in addition to other posterior structures, including the joint capsule and other lesser ligaments. It carries with it a significant risk of rupture of the popliteal artery, which is usually an intimal injury, 
or an injury to the lining of the artery. This type of injury is usually caused by traction on the artery, which is tethered to the back of the knee. An anterior knee dislocation is also often associated with an injury to the perineal nerve, which is positioned around the posterior lateral part of the knee. And that just means the outside of the knee at the back. Injuries to the popliteal artery and the perineal nerve may result in other problems that we will discuss later in the video. So now that we've learned a little bit about knee dislocations, if both of these men suffered an anterior dislocation, what was so different about their cases? In Zach Miller's case, the arterial injury was noted quite early and the vascular repair was performed immediately in conjunction with the open reduction and provisional stabilization with an external fixator. The muscle and nerve tissue in Zach Miller's lower extremity were reperfused with oxygenated blood in less than six hours. And this just means that the surgeons were able to restore the flow of blood to his leg in under six hours. The nerve and muscle tissue in his lower leg remained viable and ultimately Miller retained most of the nerve and muscle function of his lower extremity. It took nearly six months for him to regain the motor control of his lower extremity, but he was left with only a mild deficit affecting his perineal nerve and the dorsiflexion of his left ankle. In Alex Ruiz's case, on the other hand, the vascular injury was not immediately recognized. Although he did undergo surgery on the day of his injury, there was a delay between the time of his injury and the time at which the vascular repair was performed. After Alex's initial reduction, the physicians did not immediately realize that there was a vascular problem. That was until it became clear that his foot was beginning to become abnormally discolored. Additional investigations, including an ankle brachial index, a duplex ultrasound, and CT angiogram were used to confirm injury to the popliteal artery. And these are just additional investigations which provide us with information about the arterial injury. Overall, it took approximately four to five hours for the vascular injury to be diagnosed, and then an additional four to five hours for Alex to be transported to an appropriate facility where a vascular repair could be performed. Once the popliteal injury was recognized, Physicians worked urgently to stabilize the knee and reestablish vascular flow in the lower extremity. They were able to do this successfully during a lengthy procedure that followed. However, during the extended delay, injury to both the muscle tissues and the nerves of the lower extremity had occurred. Unlike with Zach Miller, vascular flow with oxygenated blood had not been restored within a few short hours of his injury. With Alex, it had taken over 10 hours for this to occur. After only six hours without oxygenated blood, nerve and muscle tissue begin to die. And while eventually blood flow was restored to Alex's lower leg, some of the damage to the tissues was permanent in nature. Once fully healed, Alex was faced with the prospect of having a lower extremity that lacked normal nerve and muscle function. And although he still had his leg, with it, he would be forced to wear a restrictive brace just to allow him to stand or walk. After six weeks in hospital and multiple surgeries, he was given the choice to live with a dysfunctional leg or to amputate his leg and rehab with a prosthetic leg that would improve his overall function. Ultimately, after much deliberation and with the support of friends and family, Alex opted to proceed with the amputation. Several months after his injury, Alex underwent a below knee amputation of his right leg. So now that you know what happened to both of these men, what happens for them now? Zach Miller and Alex Ruiz became friends after their injuries and they remain friends today. They supported each other during their recovery and their rehabilitation. Zach Miller trained with everything he had with the intention of returning to play professional football if it were at all possible. Much of his strength returned and he was able to eventually run again. However, he continued to have residual weakness in his ankle dorsiflexion and he was forced to wear a hinged ankle foot orthosis. And this is just a type of brace that is worn around the ankle to assist people who have weakness in the muscles of the ankle area. The road to professional football came to an end for Zach Miller on April 16th of 2019 when he retired from the NFL. Posted the following statement on social media.
Like Zach Miller, Alex Ruiz rehabbed and trained with everything that he had with the hope of returning to the football field once again. One year after his injury, while wearing a prosthetic leg given him by his idol, Drew Brees, Alex stepped onto the football field with the Linfield Christian team one more time. 385 days after his injury in the first quarter of a Friday night game, with only a few minutes remaining in the quarter, Ruiz threw the ball down the field to a Linfield Christian wide receiver for a touchdown. Yes, that's right, freaking touchdown. Alex Ruiz was back and he was able to leave the game on his own terms. So now for the Sparks Notes summary. Who? Zach Miller, Chicago Bears tight end. Alex Ruiz, Linfield Christian High School star quarterback. What? For both? Knee dislocations suffered as a result of hyperextension mechanisms during football games, complicated by injury to the popliteal artery and the perineal nerve. And for Alex, a below knee amputation as well. When? Initial injuries, October 2017, three weeks apart. For Zach, retirement, April 16th, 2019. For Alex, touchdown 385 days after a dislocation and an amputation. Where? the good old USA. And finally, why? After knee dislocation, it is imperative to immediately assess for vascular status in the involved extremity. Restoration of blood perfusion is required within six hours, or you risk necrosis or death of nerve and muscle tissue. And ultimately, that could be a very bad thing. And now for my favorite comments from the last video. So today we've been talking about knee dislocations and their complications. I hope this video has been educational for you. Thanks for watching. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.